And with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at the emblems and the spells earlier on with already some aggression coming in from Evo's Legends in the early game. So all flickers on the side of Onik. They want to make sure that they don't get caught in the penalty zone. That could be, that could be disastrous for them. But look at this clear speed difference, man. This box here is going to be rolling. Just farming all over the place. And Kyrie in the early game has to be a bit more careful. Loses the litho, but won't be disturbed in his purple buff. Well, it seems like here, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be the last match for Onik. Will they pull off a sweep? Okay, okay. Keyboy forced uh, an, a, re a retry there. Forced Sutsujin. But the timing is okay. So no crazy engages here. No crazy openings for the fight. Still, no first blood in the first minute. Whoa, that's a lot of wet boots, Arashi. It's a lot. As Evos always does, the Wilderness Blessing, man. Four with the agility. Even the Irithel. What's the idea here? To move faster in the jungle to get more sources of income? It's definitely an interesting approach. Maybe more kiting in, in, uh, in Lord fights. That could also be a reason for brands to go for that emblem. Do you not think that's peculiar though? I... Does brands just not want to have any benefits or slight advantages in the lane? Because that movement speed only happens in river and jungle. Right, so maybe he, he wants to rotate a bit more in the laning phase. It's definitely a bit more of, of, of some wasted potential, but he seems to be doing just fine against the Brody. It's a 4v4 now in the turtle pit. Take a look at that. That's they jump Ooh. in onto it to Tsujin, but Tsujin claims at the first turtle. Now, good penalties on Veldora, though. Will try to tank. Boots jumps in. Bezos Wrath does not connect onto the right members as Boots now will be punished. First blood for the White Tigers. Very aggressive by Boots, and he gets taken down. Keyboy in a no man's line as well here. Oh. Can he get away? Still holding on to their flicker, good timing, oh! but the damage will fall through. Another kill for Vance Raw. That's a 2 to 0 already in favor for Evo's Legends in the first two minutes of the game. A 2,000 gold lead. And now Evo's Legends, they're steamrolling onto Onik. As we take a look at the talent's prediction as well. Papulung once again, the lone wolf here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can hear the chants. Papulung anti-Onik from the Onik. Yep. Fans there in the venue, but here it is, another clash for the Lito. Retribution now, Sutsujin caught in a, uh, quite in a situation, but the Busans to save his life. Now Keyboy jumps in, but the damage will fall. Right, this time will have the extra 180 gold. Wow, aggression from Evo's Legends here again and again. This box is definitely something that Onik aren't really finding a solution for. It's a great place from Boots though. I was with the question, by the way, that in the previous fight, he flickered for the Appraiser's Wrath onto Krite, but Krite didn't take any damage. I was wondering if that's if I saw correctly, but as I was thinking, Albert now gets aggressed on. Careful. But look at the movement, man. Look at the mobility. Guiding one is so annoying. With Matilda coming back into the meta, that's just the beauty of having it on your team. Guiding in, going out, re-engaging, disengaging, juking around. The the walls, that's just everything that the Matilda has in her arsenal. And at this point, there's been a lot of miscalculation from the side of Onik as due to that mobility. Mm, all right, let's see here again. The second neutral objective. Evos Legends, they do not want to rush this. They opt for a reset. But Boots and Keyboy, they're in the vicinity as well. Veldora, though. Not showing. There you go. The penalty zone because he saw Sans. The commitment. Take a look at the way of Dragon connecting all towards one member. But Sans will Whoa. fall. Good retry. Kyrie finds the neutral objective out of nowhere. That's a one for one trade. Who is it worth it for? All things considered, I think it's worth it for Onik. Evo's Legends lost a bit of their gold lead in that engagement. About four, 400 gold, I believe. Right? It was a 2k gold lead earlier. But with the Seekers events, Onik has equalized ever so slightly and they're still waiting for chances to make plays around the map. But overall, they're just playing very reactively to Evo's Legends. The impressive thing that I do want to note, oh wait a minute, in the gold lane, a lot of action coming through. So 1v1 not for long though. Van Strong is there. If he boy, no commitment on towards the way of Dragon just yet here. They just want to seek info, they just want to provide cover if the marksman needs it. 
All right, back to that previous point. Is despite the 2K lead that the White Tigers have actually gained for themselves, Kyrie is still able to alleviate the discrepancy in EXP between him and Tsutsujin. That's he's, something that we don't see too often. He's finding gold where he shouldn't be, right? Tsutsujin is trying to pressure as much as possible, but he is going into Tsutsujin's jungle. He's avoiding the rotations as much as possible. And look at the gold. It keeps going to 2K and a 1.5. 2K and a 1.5 again. So Onik are they're just somehow finding ways to get more gold than Evos. And it, just, it seems to peri periodically keep happening. And we can see that starting to show. Again, like you mentioned, 1.8k gold lead for Evo's Legends, but it's not climbing any further away. As we're entering the mid-game, are there certain power spikes that we need to be on the look for from both of the teams? I think Onik has a lot of, a, of the mid-game power spikes. For Evo's, a lot of the power spike is early game and late game, right? For the Irithel, for the Farsa, for the Terizla as well, for instance. But for Onik, in the mid game, the Valentina, the Brody, and the Joy. Every one of these heroes are just deadly in the mid game. Only if they're on curve though. So they are still behind, but Onik always finds a way, man. Let's see, Kyrie looks for a contest. The taunt, Kyrie finds the turtle. Take a look at the back side here. Brands targeted. Heldora though, good penalty zone, but torn upon memory. Opens with Merchant and Albert called. Take a look at the penalty zone by Sans. Doesn't really connect. But Kyrie falls as well. Good engage by Valora. Now it's a 3v5. No good situation now. Good taunt though. Good terrify. And Sans gets taken out as well as Valora claims a double. The White Tigers, they're showing their fangs. 7-0, Arashi. Not the score you were expecting, but Evo's <laughs> Legends, they make sure that they punish Onik for that play. It's almost like they predicted that Onik are going to go for a steal instead. So they saved a lot of things just to ensure that it will not come for free as Sutsujin slides over the wall. A bit of a mistake there. Looking at the item share, Kyrie has the Starlium Scythe. He's doing a bit more true damage. And Albert has the Malefic Roar already on top of the, of, of the Hepatocies. So the Squishier members are definitely in danger. But considering that there is a Guiding Wind, there is the Shielding coming in from Van Strong, that might not even be relevant to the team fights. Oh man, and now Brands, he's bruising through all the turrets here in the bottom lane. Onik get a little bit of a trade back because of the wave manipulation in the top side. So there is a little bit of compensation in for Onik. But here we go, Guiding Wind! Oh, Circle Eagle as well. Brands will destroy the turret. And it seems like with that turret taken out, Evo's Legends understood the assignment and backs away. Wow. We saw earlier in game number one, it was a 5k gold lead, and Evo's Legends are literally building to the same, same lead, same pattern. What was 1k, 2k, now 4k. But in this particular situation, do they really have an answer back with Albert being on a Brody? There's still burst damage. I mean, the Brody still does a lot of damage, even in a prolonged team fight. If he stays alive long enough, there's also Kyrie to talk about, and of course, Sans on the Valentina. Depending on how creative he gets, there's still moments to be found here for Onik, but it's gonna be very difficult, especially because Evo now has learned from their mistakes. Look at the positioning, right? Everyone's spreading out to ensure that Onik can't get anything too valuable, too massive to guarantee success with a 4K gold deficit. Conceal play, Keyboy finds Kreit. Kreit still holding on towards that Purify, but he actually popped and burnt it. Van Trong and Brands here looking for a bluff play as well. No casualties Ooh. for now. That's in for Keyboy. Okay, whips the Whale Dragon. But take a look at the commitment there. Van Strong, Veldora, everyone in the bag to find and kill Keyboy. Boots low. They managed to zone the yellow porcupines out of the Lord Pick. And there you go. Evo's Legends with the first Lord in hand. <coughs> Not to mention, Van Strong has just finished the Flask of the Oasis. Now he's going to be even more obnoxious in saving his teammates, giving them remember a bit more of a shield whenever his allies get below 30% HP. So for Onik, if pickoffs are the way to go for them, this is looking even more difficult as time goes on. Oh man. Brands, look at his gold. He's so ahead. 700 in comparison to Albert, but Albert is following closely behind. 
And it doesn't look like Heboy has found the perfect engage because of the Matilda. As Evil's Legends are going in for the Bruise in the mid lane. Feather oh. airstrike, take a look at that. Burst boots down and Keyboy might be next. Albert though, quite low, survived. Torn apart memory popped. And it seems like now, Evil's Legends, they will continue with the assault. Bates are in the bottom lane, will be the target. This time, because it's still the First Lord, Onik will be able to handle that. Kyrie stuck in the front. Airborne is there. Tsutsujin jabs in and Kyrie taken out. Onik again. Whoa. Good response. Albert with a torn apart memory manages to find Tsutsujin. That's still a 2 for one trade in favor of Evo's Legends. They're looking for more. They're going in again. Penalty zone, brother airstrike combo. Sans flickers out of the way. It's Feldora now stuck in the front side. Still able wow. to sandbag and still able to guide and be safe. Okay. Wow, man, like, the uh, Prison Wrath did zero damage there. I wonder if the Fuzz of the Oasis just popped on multiple members at once? Because that passive with the shielding, that has a 40 second cooldown on each member. It's, it's, the cooldown is for each individual, not for the user of the item, so... I, I'm wondering if that's the case right here, because that's the second Appraiser's Wrath from Boots that did no damage at all. That's definitely not a good look for Onik. They're able to get kills, but only onto Susujin, which is not that big of a loss considering the circumstances. And that's why it felt like Evil's Legends saw that opening and continued to push the pedal, and in the end, they were able to get an inhibitor turret. That's super huge value, and for Evil's Legend, they look for more. PZ jumps in, and Kyrie, zero chance to get away. And Evil's Legends, they're building a very, very scary lead here. 7,000 gold lead in hand, 12 minutes in. 7k, man. This is a lot different to game number one. With 5k, there are still chances for it to turn back around, but 7k with five members up. Kyrie not on the table. It looks like Evil's Legends are oh. looking for the end. Oh, yikes. Big yikes. Sans taken out of the board. Three members defending now. Kyrie will join in five seconds. As the Lord spawns, Evil's Legends, again, discipline. Let's take the neutral objective and get away. Evos very intelligently goes for it as well. Will there be a contest though at 7k gold deficit? Look at Boost getting chunked down. Three hits, half HP. That's your frontliner. That's the lore taken by Evos Legends as well. 8k gold lead. This might be the end for Onik, honestly. If they can come back from this, I have no words. So they're not as OP as we thought. It also seems like they're experimenting. A fair bit, man. Like, if you look at limit the draft, they, they could be limit testing. That's a fair argument to make. Like you mentioned Hopium. in the beginning of the of the of the match, this isn't a match that's critical. They're not really fighting for their survival in the playoffs. Now with the Lord coming in, can Evo's Legend seal the deal in decisive fashion? It yeah. all will rely on Grants. Oh, Flicker PZ finds three, and with the help of that circling eagle, it will dismantle the formation as the base wide open. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game three.